taking over as GM of the Chicago Bears. The Bears have been struggling recently. It's time someone came in and fixed this franchise. This video ends when we hoist the Lombardi Trophy. Let's hop in. The most important player to look at here is Justin Fields, of course. In real life, what do the Bears plan to do with him? I don't know. A lot of people say, Justin Fields, those first three games were horrendous. But against the Broncos, he looked really solid. Granted, this is the same Broncos team that had 70 put up on them. And normally I'd say, of course, they'll stick with Justin Fields. But as it stands in real life, the Bears have the number one and the number two pick. Marvin Harrison Jr. and Caleb Williams should be available. If this trend continues throughout the season, a lot of people believe they're going to draft Caleb Williams. It would be a weird scenario, to say the least. But as far as my rebuild is concerned, I believe in Justin Fields. His accuracies aren't great, but he is stupid fast. 93 speed, 95 excel, 91 throw power, great break sack. He will develop really, really well. Just needs some time. 73 overall is really low. Our stud wide receiver one, DJ Moore. I feel bad for DJ Moore. He was in a pretty tough scenario in the Panthers, and now he's in an even worse scenario with the Bears. But that doesn't matter to me because I am going to make this DJ Moore a monster. We are going to use him as much as we can. I'm putting him at wide receiver one. I'm putting him at slot wide receiver. His simulated stats should be awesome. He's a great wide receiver. He's superstar. He's 26. As for the rest of these guys, Chase Claypool and Darnell Mooney, I expect they will do stuff here and there, but I think DJ Moore is going to be the workhorse. But honestly, they're not bad. Darnell Mooney and Chase Claypool are manageable. Now, Madden has Mercedes Lewis as the starting tight end, but this is silly. Cole Komet is the guy. I already like Cole Komet, but Justin Fields in real life loves Cole Komet. 24 years old, six foot six. He's got solid stats already. He's going to get a lot, a lot better. And he's star dev, so he'll progress well. I'm very glad we have him. Offensive line is pitiful. I like Cody White here. He's good. And then Darnell Wright, the rookie out of Tennessee, is going to progress well. But a 67 left tackle is laughable. That is so bad. So one of the positions I am going to target in this draft is a tackle. Hopefully it's deep on those. We'll have to see. If not, maybe a center or we'll have to look into free agency. But I'm not going to lie. Offense isn't that bad. In real life, it looks horrible, but it just isn't that bad. Also, the game is down to Foreman as the starting back. I want Khalil Herbert. Love Khalil Herbert. He's 25 too, so one of the really nice things about this rebuild, you look at all the important pieces on this offense, everybody's 26 or younger. I mean, the oldest guy that we're really paying attention to is DJ Moore, and he's 26. Darnell Wright's a rookie. Kolo Herbert's young. Fields is young. Komet's young. Mooney's young. It's actually pretty nice as far as a rebuild is concerned. But then we get to defense, and defense is not as bright. Probably the second worst D-line in the league. The only worst D-line is probably the Arizona Cardinals. So a dominant edge rusher, right or left end, or even an outside linebacker who's built for it, is something we should target in the draft as well. Tremaine Edmonds is a beast and he's 25, so we don't gotta worry about anything there. TJ Edwards is 27. He's kinda at that brink age as far as rebuilds go, but this is a nasty outside linebacker. He's got very, very good stats, so he'll, he should make it to our Lombardi team. That's my hope. Jaquan Brisker is young out of Penn State. He doesn't have the best stats yet, but I think he'll get there. He should progress well. Also, anybody who knows me, you know how painful it is to wear a Bears uniform for this video, but I had to do it. Eddie Jackson's the main vet on defense. I like him a lot, but 91 speed, and he's only going to regress from here. I'm not really interested in trading him. I'm really not interested in making any massive trade, at least not right now. I actually like the core of this team. We got Tyreek Stevenson at corner. He's 23, but he's a rookie. He's got time. He's going to progress. Then we also have Jalen Johnson, who's really young. So you look at the Bears roster on paper. They're really struggling, low overalls. But wow, is this a young team? Very young team. I think if we're able to draft a dominant edge rusher and potentially draft a solid left tackle or sign one in free agency, this Bears roster is going to be a whole lot better. We just can't expect to win anything of significance in year one or year two. Maybe year three is when we start to look at the playoffs. Now, normally I like to use Kansas City Chiefs or Dallas Cowboys playbook. They're the most OP playbooks for passing yards, but I want to try something different for this rebuild. Justin Fields is too fast and it's also not realistic. To give Justin Fields a Patrick Mahomes playbook is just not realistic. I'm going to run Baltimore Ravens John Harbaugh's offense. This should hopefully get Justin Fields running as much as humanly possible. It'll use Khalil Herbert a lot. Hopefully it doesn't take too much away from DJ Moore. That's my only concern with this. I've also never tried this in a sim, but I think it'll be fun. Let me just make sure that DJ Moore is 
wide receiver one and slot wide receiver. And he should still get solid simulated stats. That's the hope. Getting him subbed in there. All right, beautiful. All right, y'all, it's week one. Let's see what the prospects look like right now. I'm already seeing. Oh, this is so nice. So as it stands, the second overall pick, Reed McAllister, an LSU left tackle. I really do want a left tackle. I should have a pretty high pick. Oh, it'd be nice to pick him up, but we'll just have to see how this season pans out for us. There's, a, there's multiple left ends up here, actually. Chad Hardesty and Richard Henry. I'm also looking for an edge rusher. So, so far, it's looking like this draft Draft class works out for us. Quarterback, no. Strong safety, no. D-tackle, no. Wide receiver, outside linebacker. There's a left tackle at 12. There's a left end at 13. Lots of tackles, actually. Very deep tackle class. Look at this. Right tackle, right tackle, left tackle, left tackle. Nice. My three-star scout is Sean Donovan. Wide receivers and corners. I'm sorry, Sean. She's not going to happen, man. Travis Bailey is a three-star for DNs, and his secondary expertise is D-tackles. My entire defensive line could use a revamp. I'm personally targeting edge rushers, but if Travis Bailey randomly sniffed out like a generational D tackle, that'd be pretty awesome too. I'd obviously take it. All right, let's head to midseason and see what the Bears are up to here. My prediction is two and five. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay, well, you know what? It's, it literally is good. I hate to say it, but in a rebuild, this is good. 0 oh, and 7. It has been a struggle for the Chicago Bears. I wonder if that Ravens playbook has anything to do with it or if we're just that dog shit. I mean, the Chargers are an 84 overall. They're 1 and 5. So, yeah, it's just tough sledding in the NFC North. The Vikings are 7 and 0, oh, and the Packers and Lions each have four wins. My national focus scouting is going to be on DNs. I feel like I could probably just get a good tackle no matter what. Not no matter matter what but whether my tackle is a star or superstar or that good doesn't matter nearly as much as if my d-end is it's really important to me that we get an awesome d-end in this draft so we're focusing on that let's head to the playoffs let's see if the chicago bears get a win you know what's funny though like this is actually what they could be at in real life at midseason they could be 0 and 7 the chicago bears Finished the season 2-15. and 15. Absolutely pitiful. Let's see just how bad it was, though. Statistically, was Ravens' playbook just a bad call? Holy shit. Holy shit. Justin Fields ends the season with 2,614 passing yards. That is the literal lowest in the league. Oh, my God. So, Rodgers ends with 4,400. Burrow, <laughs> dude, this is actually pitiful. We literally were the worst starting quarterback in the league. It wasn't even close as far as passing yards. Jimmy G is next, and then CJ Stroud. This is so funny to me. CJ Stroud is the only quarterback who played worse than me with 19 interceptions. CJ Stroud is an absolute god in real life right now. He's actually playing so good. Deshaun Watson's down here. Baker's down here. Impressive rushing yards for Justin Fields. Fields at 756. But look at this. Hertz, 762. 15 touchdowns. Justin Fields, zero. Zero touchdowns. Oh my God, that's horrible. Khalil Herbert found the end zone eight times for 700 yards. I mean, we were just horrible. We hardly even scored any touchdowns. DJ Moore at 679 yards and seven touchdowns. Komet, 575 and six. So honestly, this playbook was quite nice for our wide receiver one tight end and wide receiver two. Claypool got a lot of yards too. So kind of evenly distributed for the wide receivers. I don't know, man. Tremaine Edmonds, damn, 134 tackles, three TFLs. Nobody sacking the quarterback. Nobody. Yannick Ngakwe got four. Oh, geez. This is undoubtedly the worst start I've ever had to a rebuild. And I just, I got to wonder how much of that is the Ravens playbook. I thought that would be perfect for Justin Fields. I'm switching our playbook to Kansas City. I caved that quick. But what I do like about this is it should use a lot of our tight end. I think Khalil Herbert's going to take a little sideline here. But Cole Komet... And Justin Fields should hopefully have a much better year, too. Um, gosh, let's look at the roster. I think these guys are going to have real low morale. It's going to be tough sled in Chicago. Yeah, everybody, everybody's unhappy. Cowboys won the Super Bowl. Absolute massive shocker to absolutely nobody. Josh Jacobs, Offensive Player of the Year. Rishi Rice got Offensive Rookie of the Year. Defensive Rookie of the Year. That is a first. Brian Brissy, Clemson D-Tackle. I've never seen him win it before. Headed into fridge and see we have a ton of cap space. The only thing is not a lot of players are going to be interested in playing for us. So we'll take what we can get. I don't hate Michael Pierce. It's just a little too old for me to pay that much. Kirk Cousins is in free agency. Okay. Michael Pierce is actually a really good signing for us here. He's not probably going to play more than two years, but I don't expect to draft a D tackle. So picking up Michael Pierce to beef up the D line and then drafting an edge rusher would be pretty nice. 
That's kind of expensive for not that great of a D tackle, but he's already interested in us. He should hopefully go through. Another offensive line signing, Mitch Morse, is available. Could give him a one-year deal. I'll sweeten it just a little bit. Hopefully, we can get him to come too. So a little offensive line boosts. So if both those guys sign... This would be a really nice free agency. I don't want to pick up anyone else, though. I'm really worried about the draft. Mitch Morse and Michael Pierce. Welcome to the Chicago Bears. Yo! Oh, my God. Jalen Johnson went up to superstar. We had a pitiful season, but I guess if our offense was so bad, we are probably... On defense a lot. Jalen Johnson got super... That's huge, actually. Did not expect that. I don't think anybody else did anything. No, they didn't. But that is pretty awesome. Taking a look at the mock drafts. We do have the very first pick. But this mock is predicting that what we traded with the Rams. Interesting. It's looking like Reed McAllister is an absolute stud, though. We also have the fifth pick. Actually, no, in a lot of these mocks, it looks like Reed McAllister might actually fall. This is interesting. Those mock drafts having Chad Hardesty actually be the first player off the board and then Reed McAllister being available later. I think I will do that. I'll take Chad Hardesty first and then Reed McAllister. And by the way, the reason I want Chad Hardesty is this guy is undoubtedly the best edge rusher in the draft, at least based on these stats. Number one, his skills are absurd he's got six a's really in this in the stats that matter block shedding finesse finesse and power moves being a is gross he's so good his physicals are nasty too like this guy is a freak show i don't know if he's gonna be superstar x factor but this is one of like the most guaranteed talents i'll probably ever draft agility change direction speed is elite strength is great Acceleration's good. Acceleration's the only thing I would want better. This guy's nasty. So with our first pick, we take Chad Hardesty. With our second pick, hopefully, Reed McAllister is still available. His skills are incredible too. Tons of A's all across the board. We need a left tackle. And then physically, his strength is elite, which is the most important physical rating for your offensive line. Uh, and the rest is still like pretty good. I mean, his jumping is decent, but I, I can't imagine that matters. So the perfect draft, Chad Hardesty, Reed McAllister, and we'll pick up some studs in the second round potentially too. All right, the draft is underway. Round one, pick one. You already know exactly what I'm taking. Phil Duncan, you might be a god, man, but I believe Justin Fields. We are taking our guy, Chad Hardesty, out of California, the 6'6 power rusher. This guy has to be hidden death. There's just no way. Boom. Dude, he's a freak. He's a freak power rusher, 6'6", 86 speed, 89 strength, 83. Dude, he's a freak. Chad Hardesty. I'm excited to use him, man. So Chad Hardesty first. Our next pick is round one, pick five. We technically could trade up, but I don't think it's important enough to trade up. I don't really want to give up anything else either. Let's just hope that those mock drafts really did give us a good look. It doesn't look like the Broncos or the Seahawks want a left tackle. Definitely not the Seahawks. They have Charles Cross. I could see the Broncos taking him though. This is the only team I'm worried about. They take Phil Duncan. They're done with Russell Wilson. And there's no way the Seahawks are taking a left tackle. There's just no way. Please don't take my boy. Don't take Reed McAllister, bro. Please, 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 please. Lionel Harper goes to the Seahawks. We got both our guys exactly where we wanted them. That's huge. Reed McAllister, we scouted him. He's a top five pick. He's got to be hidden dev himself. Dude, this dude's got 93 strength. Oh, out of LSU, bro. He is league bound. He actually has really good acceleration too. I know the Bears love their screen passes, so maybe that's good. 69 speed, this guy's perfect. Our next pick is the first pick of the second round, so hopefully we can pick up one more hidden dev stud, and this will be a perfect, perfect draft. This center, Ian Carlisle, has been flying up the board, and I wouldn't hate that, but we did just sign Mitch Moore, so I just think it's overkill. I think the next pick I'm gonna take is actually right guard Jerry Atkinson. I wanna beef my O line up so much. We got an awesome left tackle, and Jerry Atkinson, great physicals with the elite strength, great excel. His skills have got a lot of A's in there, and he's been flying up the draft board. He's actually up 28 since the start if he's not hitting dev this isn't a good pick but i'm gonna take him let's 
go. Dude, we got some O-line monsters in Chicago. 92 strength, 81 XL. He's hitting dev two. So he's looking like a really, really good draft so far. Our next pick's gonna be round three, pick one. I almost wanna take a wide receiver. I almost wanna take a wide receiver. There's one available. Couple safeties. There is a wide receiver available and he has been flying up the boards too. Luke Hardy out of Oklahoma State. His catching is F. How is your catching F? His skills look horrible. His physicals don't, this guy sucks. Unless Luke Hardy is like a superstar X Factor, this guy's dog shit. Yeah, I'm too scared of that. I'm not taking him. What about Rudy Cowart out of Auburn? He's 6'2 with elite strength, elite jumping, good speed, marginal excel. So he's probably slow. I don't hate it. I would like a nice wide receiver here though. Got Enrique Garcia out of LSU with elite change of direction, solid speed, much better skills. I like him better. This is a bit of a Hail Mary, but I'm taking... Enrique Garcia also out of LSU. So he played with McAllister. Hey, hey, yo. Oh, we got a Mexican wide receiver, Enrique Garcia. 6'3 out of LSU with insane change of direction. He's not fast, but he's 6'3 and he's hit. That's three hidden devs. Monster draft, no, four. Monster draft so far. I think I'll probably put him in the depth chart over Chase Claypool, maybe over Darnell Mooney. My final selection will be Richard Johnson. He's still available. I just feel like the value's here. I always do that. A guy drops really far and I'm like, oh, I should take him because he's good value. And then he ends up being normal depth. If this is the fourth round. Richard Johnson, 90 speed, 94 excel, 6-1 corner. Hey, he's gonna be in the lineup somewhere. Hopefully he's a high overall. Doesn't really look like it based on that. I like to let the C you make some picks especially when it's this deep it's fun to see if they can pick up a heater so i'm gonna advance to the end of this draft let's see what we got here the draft recap gentlemen the most important part our 2024 rookies oh my oh my god yo <laughs> Wait, this is the highest overall player I've ever drafted. Yo! Dude, and he fell to five. I just think the teams in front of me didn't need a left tackle. That's... M Dude, and, and, and Chad Hardesty ended up being an excellent pick, too. This was an ultra-strong draft class. Holy shit. The CPU picked Ladarius McCutcheon out of UCLA, 74 overall, with 87 speed outside linebacker. Huge pickup. Townsend's trash. Trainer's trash. Richard Johnson, the corner, so he's a high overall. He just, he just is normal dev. Enrique Garcia's a 76. Atkinson's a 75. McAllister's an 82. This is one of the best drafts I've ever done. No question is one of the best drafts I've ever done. So Chad Hardesty. Hey, by the way, please, in the comments, let me know what you think about this. I like to look at their dev trait. If you guys think this is cheating or I shouldn't be looking, just let me know. But I'm looking on this one. Chad Hardesty! Let's go! Generational! Generational talent, superstar X Factor, 79 overall Chad Hardesty. He was the clear cut round one pick one, so it kind of makes sense that it'd be him, but I'm just so glad we got him. Reed McAllister, if you're a superstar, I'm gonna nut. Oh my God, I'm the best fucking GM of all time. I'm the best GM that ever existed. All right, Jerry Atkinson, holy shit. Keep in mind, my draft class settings are set to strong for every position. Oh, he's star, darn it. Dude, if he was superstar, but still, I can't believe how well this draft went, especially Enrique Garcia. This was a shot in the dark. I thought this guy was going to be a bum. Enrique Garcia, are you a superstar? He's a superstar. Oh my God. Holy shit, we turned around the Bears so fast. And then Richard Johnson, we know he's normal, but did the CPU pick me up a hidden dev? Ladarius McCutcheon. Oh my God, they picked me up a hidden dev outside linebacker. He's a star. He's a star dev. And then Alani Townsend. Yeah, it'd be insane if you were hidden dev, right? Okay. But let's see how the entire draft class was. Maybe this was just an ultra strong draft class. Oh my God, it was. Whoa. Holy shit. Look at this draft class. So Chad Hardest, he went to us. Second pick was Richard Henry, who was also good. Either of the end options were good. Phil Duncan was an 81 out the gates. That boy is getting paid. Lionel Harper, 81. On. McAllister's 82. Chris Barrow. The corner that went to the Saints has 97 speed. Devontae Palmer. Hey, we got the right tackle though. This dude's a 74, then 76, 73, 74. So that's a weak spot. Dead spot in the draft right there. Then Aaron Bates, corner 80 overall. Lots of 74s and 73s. It's a very top heavy draft. Montel Beckham, wide receiver for the Bills. See, that's what's crazy. I got Enrique Garcia in the fourth round and he was a 76. This dude's a 70. He's hardly better. 
Garcia's a superstar. That was such an amazing pick. Amazing. Dude, that was such a good draft. Oh, I'm so excited about that. That's amazing. One big change I'll be making this year is my slot wide receiver is not going to be DJ Moore. DJ Moore is going into his sixth year. He's awesome. He's still wide receiver one, but I know that that slot wide receiver is going to get a lot of touches. I'm actually making it Enrique Garcia. Garcia is a rookie who is a superstar out the gates. They progress so fast. It's stupid. And wow, my set looks so so badass right now with that light in the back. I use natural lighting. I don't use any artificial lighting, so. Also, you know it's a Bears rebuild when it's gonna be nighttime by the time I win the Super Bowl. Dude, look at this team. In one amazing draft and one amazing free agency, we have fully turned this team around. A beautiful developing offensive line. Tevin Jenkins is starting. Morse from free agency. Atkinson and McAllister from the draft. And Darnell Wright was a rookie last year. Komet's looking good. Enrique Garcia. Can we talk about this guy? He's a superstar out of LSU. He's putting on for all my Mexicans. Let's go, baby. When's the last time you saw a Mexican wide receiver? Honestly, there could be a bunch and I wouldn't even know because I don't see color because I'm so racist. DJ Moore wide receiver one. Enrique Garcia slot wide receiver. Darnell Mooney's getting bumped down the depth chart. I do feel bad about that, but Garcia's just going to progress a lot faster. And then defensively, Michael Pierce in free agency and Gakwe is a solid option at right end, but really it's Hardesty. Hardesty over here at left end who's going to be a stud. We still got Edwards. Edmonds and then Jack Sanborn. Or wait a minute. I do have a better outside linebacker because we drafted a hidden dev outside linebacker. I got to move that in the depth chart. We actually did everything. We really did everything. So Jack Sanborn is going to take a seat behind Ladarius McCutcheon. That's a Madden name if I've ever seen one. Ladarius McCutcheon. All right, y'all. We're ready to sim to midseason. Team's looking so good. Morale is reset. This could be a really, really good year. Ooh, I'm so excited. Excited. Wow, I've never been so excited for a rebuild. Wait a minute. Halfway through the season, we're three and four. And remember when the Vikings were seven and oh at midseason last year? Yeah, they're 0 oh and six. I don't know, but already we're off to a, a much better season. It looks like we even got a weekly award. Yes, Edmonds with eight tackles and an interception. Not bad. Headed to the playoffs. Let's see if we end with a winning record. I don't expect to make the wild card, but it's possible we're three and four right now. Ten games left in the season. We could be a cheeky little nine and eight. Nine and eight playoff team? Oh, darn, my hopes and dreams. Hey, well, we went from two and 15 to seven and 10 in one short year. And importantly, I wanna see if our players developed well. Any X Factor, oh, I was gonna say there's a bunch of upgrades, but it's not, it's just the dev traits unlocking. So McAllister, superstar Enrique Garcia, he's up to an 83 already. DJ Moore's now a 91 and Darnell hasn't moved. Justin Fields, let's take a look at him. He's up to an 82 overall. He started at a 73, so he's plus nine overall already. Ready. Accuracies are so much better. Throw on the runs looking good. Short accuracy hit 90. Under pressure is looking great. He's still fast as hell. You can't take his speed away from him. And then defensively, wow. Interesting. McCutcheon must not have seen the field as much. 457 snaps through the whole season? That can't be right. I must have something wrong in here. Probably specialist, but Hardesty, we knew he was X-Factor. Jalen Johnson's up to a 90. I gotta look at my specialist. I must be doing something wrong with McCutcheon here. Need him to be a sub linebacker or slot corner. Let's move Kyler Gordon to slot corner. I rush right end. Ooh, Hardesty was not at rush right end. Shit, that is a bummer. Definitely needed to do that earlier. That's okay. Look at how much of a difference these playbooks make. So Justin Fields went from 2,600 passing yards to 3,900. Now granted, he did have a much better offensive line and better wide receiver threats, but it's literally all in the playbook. Like for him to be now the eighth, most passing yards quarterback after being literally dead last. Dead last this season is Will Levis. Although technically Derek Carr. Danny Dimes is down there. Brock Purdy, Jalen Hurts, and Phil Duncan. The number one overall pick, Phil Duncan, threw 26 touchdowns. Or the first quarterback off the board, Phil Duncan, threw 26 touchdowns, only 12 interceptions. Nice. Actually, I'm impressed. On the ground, Khalil Herbert almost hit 1,000 yards. Justin Fields significantly less, but he did have three touchdowns. DJ Moore had the most. Garcia next, then Komet, and then Darnell Mooney. That's almost exactly how I want it to look and evenly spread out those touchdowns. Defensively, it's Edwards with the most tackles, then Edmonds. Brisker's up there. Seven interceptions for Tremaine Edmonds. I'm actually very shocked by that. Justin Jones had three sacks and almost no sacks. One sack out of Chad Hardesty. This is entirely my fault. I did not have him 
him in at rush right end, which is a huge mistake. So I kind of, I, I honestly just completely messed up Chad Hardesty's. Oh, that's so stupid of me. Dude, I botched Hardesty's rookie year, but that's okay because Hardesty's already X Factor. He's going to be awesome next year. I can't dwell on that. The Jaguars. Oh my God. The Jaguars win the Super Bowl. Devin Hamilton is the MVP. And we don't win offensive or defensive rookie of the year. It's entirely my fault. I did not have my guys in the right position. I'm mad at myself, man. I should have been there. For anyone who was confused about where Braxton Jones was, I have no idea how I fumbled the bag on this, but I didn't even notice him in the depth chart. I don't know how I missed that. So I apologize, but I have moved Braxton Jones to center and uh, he's going to hang out there. Cole Komet is up to superstar, which is awesome. He just got that in the the 2024 season. Oh my God. What? Everybody's up. Edmonds is up to superstar. Edwards is up to superstar. Brisker's up to superstar. Dude, this defense is getting crazy. Oh my God. We're definitely going to have to get a new right end because Ngakwe is 30 years old now and he's only getting worse. So we can definitely target that in the draft. But other than that, gosh, this team looks so good. Actually, like it looks amazing. Not too worried about anything. We might. Oh, what's it going to take to get Jesse Bates off the Falcons? Oh, he's a freak. Now let's get someone younger. Let him develop. I'd like to get a stud safety that's going to progress a lot better. My target is CJ Gardner Johnson from the Lions. He's already an 89 overall. I'll offer Eddie Jackson and a second rounder and I'll see what more they want than that. What? Oh my, I don't, dude, I don't know. I guess I'm the worst GM in the world. I don't know how they're taking this trade. I thought for sure this was a low ball. That actually like literally takes the fun out of the rebuild for me. That's so unrealistic. There is no way that the commanders should be trading Chase Young for a first round, right? Or am I a casual? Eric Stokes wants to be a Chicago Bear. I would love to, to beef up the corners. We, we are probably going to get Greg Newsom. I don't think we need Eric Stokes. I do want a kicker. It, good kickers are actually pretty important. Who's available? Evan McPherson. That's like the exact guy you want. It's expensive, but it's a kicker. So it's really not that expensive. I'm going to offer him a heater. See if he signs. Let him eval. Yeah, he signed with us. He's already with us. Let's go. So Newsom signs and our kicker signs. Still got a lot of cap. Take me to the draft. Take me to the draft. I got Chase Young. I got CJ Gardner Johnson. I got Newsom. I got Evan McPherson. We didn't unload all our picks and I still over traded like I still I still gave up too much I don't get it man I've done I've done like 10 rebuilds now and I don't get it headed into season three this team has so much talent on it such an awesome offensive line superstar Komet Garcia DJ Moore Justin Fields then defensively dude we made some insane adjustments Chase Young Hardesty got Stevenson Johnson Greg Newsom and of course CJ Gardner Johnson those trades were Nuts. Sorry, the sun is now clapping me in the face. This, the natural light isn't as cool anymore. Gardner Johnson, Chase Young. We are chilling, boys. We are chilling. Not my best draft, but honestly, I don't think it matters. This team is ready to go win. Holy shit. 87 overall. Ayo! Midseason! We got a winning record, ladies and gentlemen. We're 4-2. But I think even cooler, I see a breakout wide receiver right here. Get Enrique Garcia, four touch. Oh, dude, that is a lot, though. So if Enrique Garcia has a monster game, he'll go up to Superstar X Factor. Right now, the Packers are 4-2, and two, we're 4-2, and two, and the Vikings are 4-3. and three, So it's a dogfight in the NFC North right now. We're kind of a lock for the playoffs this time around. That's fire. Dude, the Bears are up to a 91 overall. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, we got a buy. Dude, I, for a second there, I was like, wait a second, we didn't even make the wide wild card so we're 12 and 5 we get a buy in the wild card we got a weekly award which was fucking enrique garcia six receptions 140 yards and three dude what enrique garcia's a monster that was my fourth round pick Dude, this guy's such a beast. Justin Fields continues to improve. 4,450 passing yards this season. 35 and 15. On the ground, Khalil Herbert finally got 1,000 yards and 11 touchdowns. Fields had 440. Receiving, Enrique Garcia, 15 touchdowns, 1,200 yards. Komet, 1,107. So two receivers over 1,000 yards. And Moore had 890 and 8. He has definitely taken a little bit of a back seat. I didn't realize just how dominant Enrique Garcia was going to be just by being slot wide receiver, but he has fully 
taken over. And now that I finally properly am using Chad Hardesty, 10 sack season. That's amazing. Chase Young only got four. I'm actually shocked at how ineffective Chase Young was, but it doesn't matter when Chad Hardesty's doing it. Two for TJ Edwards, two for Michael Pierce. Great season all around for us. Also, somehow Trenton Gill is my field goal kicker. Even though I signed Evan McPherson, I have to adjust the depth chart on my kickers, don't I? That's, that's an oversight. To this day, in my rebuilds, I've never won the Super Bowl in this year. Like the third year, I've never done it. I always win it in the fourth or beyond. Would be sick if we got it right now. I'd be really excited if we get it right now. 91 overall Chicago Bears taking on the 88 overall Carolina Panthers. I just realized my only X Factor player, Chad Hardesty. That's it. A bye in the wild card. Our first playoff game is the divisional round taking on the Carolina Panthers. It was actually my last rebuild was the Panthers. I love to see this. Look at this. Look at Bryce Young facing off with Justin Fields. Starting out with a Chicago touchdown, a Panthers field goal, a Panthers touchdown. Oh, this is going to be close. 14-13, 17-13, 16-17. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. Wait, this is so close. Third quarter's got 45 seconds left. It's 24-24. to Bears on offense. Justin Fields hanging out in the pocket. Throws, where are you throwing? There is a penalty, I think. I think that's DPI. I think that's coming back. Pass interference on the defense or roughing the passer. Bail out of the century. The Bears playoffs hopes could have literally just ended, but they get a roughing the passer. We hand off to Khalil Herbert, who has six rushes for 10 yards. He is going nowhere against this Panthers defense. Second and three, play action. I'll hit Herbert. Dude, where are you throwing? That was a horrible drop. You got to catch that. Don't you dare hand this off, coach. Oh my God. Coach runs a pitch play on third and three in the... It's a 50-yard field goal. Oh my God. That was just pitiful. Luckily, I did actually sub Evan McPherson in, and that's so crucial that I did because I don't think our punter could hit a 50-yard field goal. McPherson's going to absolutely drill it. The Bears go up three, but oh my God, what a fall apart. God, a pitch on third and three. I'm so mad about that. The Panthers are into Bears territory with two minutes and 30 seconds left on the clock. I need Chad Hardesty and Chase Young to get to Bryce Young. He checks down. He's tackled inbounds. Hands it off. Oh, what a move. Jalen Johnson juked out of his shh. Jalen Johnson just got put on a highlight reel by Miles Sanders. No. 31 to 24. That's going to put the Panthers up by four. It's a touchdown. Are we... It's a touchdown or we're going home. The clock is ticking. Justin Fields checks down. Get out of bounds. God, Fields has 350 yards and three touchdowns and we're losing by four. That's really on our defense, dude. It really is on our defense. Fields drops back. Checking down again to commit. We don't got the clock for this. You run a draw? Coach, what the fuck is wrong with you? Well, okay. That no huddle was pretty quick. All right. Maybe the draw was a decent play. Justin Fields rolling out, throws a laser, caught. Oh, that's huge. DJ Moore catches it, gets out of bounds. 52 seconds left, 26 yards to go. Oh my God, we really could do it right here. First and 10, hit him, hit him, hit him. Yes, DJ Moore over the middle. Timeout Bears. Second and four, Justin Fields drops back. Who's open? Moore again, same play. He goes Herbert. Do we use the timeout? The clock is ticking. Get your ass up there. No way you took that long to spike it. No way you took that long to spike it. Okay, he's dropping back. He throws. Oh, Justin. Second and 10, at least the clock is stopped. Fields steps up. Go, go. He's not there. Timeout. You gotta die, Fields. Third and inches. Don't you run the ball, coach. Don't you fucking dare. You have to pass this. Yes. No. Oh, my God. Justin Fields. I should have traded your ass. Oh, I should have drafted. Mm. I should have drafted Phil Duncan. I should have should have traded your ass and drafted Phil Duncan. You know what? Low key, I'm being a baby. I'm being a baby. This was insane to be 12 and 5 at this point in the season. It's insane to be 12 and 5 at this point in the rebuild, I should say. Awesome game. Great game, Panthers. God damn it. Oh, we were really right there. That's crazy. Panthers, you better go on all the way to win the Super Bowl. God, we had 400 yards of offense. Dude, two interceptions from Fields that we got bailed out on the first one. So that's basically just karma. Did the Panthers? Oh my God, they did. 
Oh, they did. You know, this is actually a good sign because if that Panthers team beat the Chiefs and I damn near beat that Panthers team, it's pretty obviously our year. Dude, Matthias McLaughlin, that 98 speed running back from the draft, he wins offensive rookie of the year, which makes sense. Actually, the Chargers got offensive and defensive rookie of the year. Damn. The Jets coach was the coach of the year. Lots of stuff is happening in this one. And yes, guys, like I said, it's a Bears rebuild. So we went from daylight to fully nighttime now. Yeah. Oh my God. I didn't even notice. Komet, Superstar X Factor. Enrique Garcia probably got his breakout then if he's Superstar X Factor. Fields, looking like a monster. DJ Moore looking like a monster. Mooney's looking amazing. O-line's great. Khalil Herbert leaves in free agency, so we need a running back. Technically could re-sign him. Jalen Johnson gets Superstar X Factor. Brisker Newsom is now Superstar. This defense is nuts, man. Michael Pierce has regressed significantly, though, so my D-tackle's no, no longer as good as it once was, but I mean, this is our Super Bowl year right here. We got 90 mil in cap too. Let's just nuke. Dude, let's just get some monster free agents. Travis Kelsey's available, but no, Komet's literally Travis Kelsey, but honestly, probably better. Travis Jones out of Connecticut looks like he does want to sign with us. He's only 26. That's pretty young. It's a nice young D-tackle free agent. We'll take him. I, I mean, this free agency is not very impressive though. I'll be honest. I guess I like Trey Hendrickson, but I got Chase Young. I don't really need any of these guys. That's crazy that there's nobody I really want. Tyler Algier is nice, but ugh, I could just trade for a back. Free agency is pretty weak, but that's also not true. My team is just so good that free agency doesn't do me much good unless there's like a 90 plus overall D tackle in there. As far as getting a halfback, I either trade for an absolute superstar, amazing halfback, or I just use some draft capital on one right now. Round one pick 28, we have a decision to make. Do we draft a halfback or do we trade for one using this first round pick? Let's see what the halfbacks look like. There's Cam Turner and there's Deshaun McCann. Cam Turner is a round one to two production. Deshaun McCann, round two to three. What do we think about Cam Turner? 6'1 out of South Carolina. He's got eight. Whoa. A lot of A's. A ton of A's. Scouting report. Okay. Whoa. This guy's a freak. Elite speed, elite jump, elite change direction, elite excel. Yo. What? Dude, this guy's a dog, but he has a minus nine rank change. Ah. I can't pass him up, but I have a feeling he's normal dev. Because why would his rank drop? <gasps> oh my God. God! Cam Turner! <laughs> Dude, I thought he was gonna be normal dev. This guy's a monster! Cam Turner out of South Carolina is like Matthias McLaughlin, who won offensive rig of the year last year. 98 speed, 95 excel, he's hidden dev? Who is this guy? Dog, that's the only thing I wanted. I'm gonna let the CPU take over for the rest. Dude, what? I've never drafted a running back that elite. I usually don't really draft running backs. So this is just new to see, but Khalil Herbert doesn't want to get paid, doesn't want to be a Chicago Bear. So it's Cam Turner. Dude, what? Dude, he's got to be at least like a 77 overall. He has to be a 77 overall. The moment of truth, Cam Turner! Oh my God! <laughs> no shot! What? Okay, that is... That has to be like the single highest overall possible. Holy shit. Dude, what is this guy made out of? South Carolina, Cam Turner has, dude, he's literally came out the gates a fucking monster. He came out the gates, top 12% of halfbacks. This is like B. John Robinson. Stiff arm, change of direction, juke. Oh my God. This is the Bears organization's next Walter Payton. What the fuck? This guy's insane. CPU took a 74 strong safety, a 73 wide receiver, a 74 MLB. He's probably hidden dev. Yeah, Tevin Snell. They got uh, Austin Sprinkle, who's a hidden dev wide receiver. And Richard Meeks, normal dev strong safety. Not a bad draft at all. Let's take a look around the entire league. Round one pick one was an 83 overall wide receiver. So this is just a much stronger class than the last one, which is crazy because it's still on strong. 80 overall QB, Greg Mayen. Damn, he's a... There's no 86? Dude, he's like far and beyond the best player in the draft. I've never done that before. 86? That literally has to be the highest possible. I'm Googling it. 86 overall. I'm on the Reddit right now. I've drafted an 86 overall halfback and an 86 overall cornerback in a few separate franchises. Oh shit, this guy said he drafted an 88 overall running back. So I guess it could be a little bit higher, but dude, that's in, he's 98 speed. 
That's so awesome. Well, wow, so there's just a ton of 79, 78, 77s, but there's a huge drop off. There's only 380 pluses, which is Mayan, David Holly, and Cam Turner. That was purely situational. I only took him because he was the best handbag available. I didn't, I didn't really scout him. Hey, well, that is amazing, boys. Let's adjust the depth chart. Cam Turner is about to go the fuck off. He's about to have a monster season. I almost want to like change my playbook so he can get more use. Nah, Khalil Herbert did a thousand yards with Chiefs. That's so crazy to me. You know, I can't believe I didn't even check. I didn't even check if Cam Turner is... Su I figure if you're this high of an overall, you have to be superstar, right? Like at least that or he's probably superstar X Factor. I drafted two superstar X Factors in this class. I'm literally the greatest GM that's ever lived. I'm actually the fucking greatest GM. Yeah, Terry Terry. Terry Terry was a bad pick, but we make up for it with our Cam Turners. With our Chad Hardesties, we make up for it. And I didn't even draft a D Tech, which is like totally what I was supposed to draft. Let me actually make sure he is the running back at every position. Third down running back. Oh yeah, here we go. Cam Turner, Cam Turner. Slot wide receiver can continue to be Enrique Garcia. Yes. 2026 season, we're 13 and four, so not as good of a record, but obviously our schedule is a lot harder. Dude, we're a 94 overall, and look who we're playing. We're playing the Panthers again. Dude, we're a 94 overall. That's insane. I've never had an overall that high. That's thanks to Cam Turner being a 97 overall. <laughs> this guy's god. That's the that's literally the single greatest draft pick I've ever made. No question. Oh my god, look how stacked this team is. Disgusting. Actually stupid. Interestingly enough, though, Justin Fields regresses in yards and he still has a good amount of interceptions. Justin Fields is like the only guy on this team who's not progressing that fast. Cam Turner. 1,400 yards, 20 touchdowns. You think he won Offensive Rookie of the Year? Damn near could have won MVP. 1,000 yards, 9 touchdowns for Garcia. Yeah, you know, it's funny. Like, it's Justin Fields is the only guy who's struggling. Chase Young got five sacks. Hardesty at three and a half. So a regression on defense too. Well, I guess we're running the ball so effectively. We're just not passing as much because of Cam Turner. This dude is almost a 99 overall in one season. I've never seen that. This is the highest overall I've ever had. 94 overall Chicago Bears with Jalen Johnson, Hardesty, and Cam Turner with a playoff rematch against the Carolina Panthers. Wonder if this will even be a game. Or do we kind of just blow them out here? Starting out 7-0 Bears. 7-7, 10-7, 17-7. Oh shit, 14-7. Whoa. High scoring game, 24-14. 21-24, 31-21, and I think we're just ending it. Yes, let's go, Bears. We honestly made that one easy. There was never really a point for me to come in and watch, but hey, I want to see Cam Turner get a handoff. I do want to see that. Oh, throw it to him. Justin Fields, you're so great. Oh my God, deja vu, but he gets in this time. <laughs> Dude, that was like the same down and distance, except honestly, this time it didn't matter. Like that we were just stat padding at that point, 38 to 21, but holy shit. Last time Justin Fields did that, he got stuff. Oh, 38-21. Finally getting past our rivals, the Carolina Panthers. The Chicago Bears have their first playoff win, beating our rivals, the Carolina Panthers. So the Panthers won the Super Bowl last year. That's got to be a good sign for us here. Justin Fields with a master class. Four touchdowns, 145.6 QBR. Uh, Cam Turner, 5.1 yards per carry and seven broken tackles. Somebody, oh my God. He's going to want to get paid. Up next is the divisional. Take it on the Atlanta Falcons. 89 overall. What is their team? What is this Falcons roster looking like? They got 99 Jesse Bates, 99 Lindstrom, 99 Pitts, 99 Bijan, 97 AJ Terrell, Drake London, got Brett Parker, D-Tackle. Who's the quarterback? Still Desmond Ritter. I am shocked by that. All right, we're taking on Desmond Ritter in the divisional. Will this one be a good game? Looks like the Bears are going to march 7-0. We're going to march again. 14-7, they scored quick. 21-7. This is a super high scoring game. We just got stopped there. 28-14. 28-17. Oh, I think we just we just pieced them apart the same the same way we pieced apart the Panthers. We pieced apart the Falcons. And we're throwing in a field goal just to make them feel bad. That's disrespectful. But I like it. Step head all you want. 31-7. I guess the game's not over till it's over. 31 to 17. McPherson's gonna drill this. Wow, another no sweater. Although, I guess, I don't know. Falcons fans have seen some crazy uh, comebacks. And by that, I mean, they've seen teams come back on them by a crazy amount. So I'm not exactly worried about the Falcons doing it to us. 17 to 31. Let's see Desmond Ritter's final play. You got to heave that bitch, Desmond. He heaved that bitch. Out of bounds. Let's see what he's got. Dropping back. Dropping way back. Don't you just love that? Checking down in the divisional championship. Down by 14. And truly the final play from Desmond Ritter, Bijan, and this Atlanta Falcons team, the divisional playoff. A cakewalk for the Bears, but he unloads. 
Dude, that was open. Desmond Ritter. Not the game. And what do you know? Was that the same score? No, it was. We had 38-21 in the first one. 31. We are dropping a lot of points in these games. And I'm talking shit about Ritter. Ritter played pretty good. 17 for 28, 200 yards, two touchdowns, and interception. But not as good as Fields. 275, three tutties, no interceptions. And Cam Turner. Cam Turner is the reason for all of this, man. 15 for 81, 5.4 yards for carry, a touchdown, and four broke down. He's so good. And you know, I never checked the yearly awards. Was Cam Turner up here for MVP? Oh, he never was up here. That's actually a bummer. He was fourth in Offensive Player of the Year voting. I thought he'd be higher. Greg Newsom and TJ Edwards were in it for Defensive Player of the Year. Cam Turner definitely got Offensive Rookie of the Year, though. On to the NFC Championship, gentlemen. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my, I've never seen this. The Dallas Cowboys are 17 and 0. They're not 17 0. They're 18 and 0 because they would have gotten a bye and then they won. Holy shit! This was the last rebuild I did. Was going undefeated. The Cowboys are trying to go undefeated right now. Whoa! We are a 95 overall roster though. I think my team is so brokenly overpowered that like I don't think it matters how good the Cowboys are. You ever seen a 95 overall in a rebuild? I have never seen a team this high of an overall. And I didn't even like I didn't even fully unload my picks or anything. I could still trade away so many picks and even technically make this team better got a nice upgrade so tremaine edmonds is about to be a 95 with this upgrade i'm gonna give him field general technically a 98 with morale this whole team is so good how do the cowboys look 99 cd 99 trayvon Diggs, 99 micah i noticed in a lot of franchise sims the cowboys do nothing they all they do is just re-sign their players and they're insane i mean i would too but like you never see any big changes this is literally just the cowboys roster except way better wow the cowboys are looking <laughs> for an undefeated the first ever 20 and 0 season but they've got to get through the 95 overall chicago bears to do so they do have home field advantage i like our odds here we go y'all opening drive bears score oh we didn't convert on that one seven to seven cowboys are marching 14 to seven seven dude what 14 to seven. Oh, we stopped them 21 17 holy shit 24 to 21, Chicago's got the ball first and 10. NFC Championship to stop the Cowboys. Cinderella run, a laser! Cole Komet, he's still going! Dude, we're almost going too fast. The Cowboys are gonna be able to score now. Run the ball, no! Why are we in five wide? Get some clock. Justin Fields, don't fumble! Oh my God, you're scaring the shit out of me. First and goal. We're on the two. Give it to our generational running back. Please let me see Cam Turner. Cam Turner in the backfield. Cam Turner, the handoff. Stuffed. Oh no, and we, we can't just take a field goal. We gotta get a We gotta get a touchdown. Dropping back. It's a screen. Cam Turner breaks a tackle and he's in. He's really that guy. Cam Turner is really that guy. We gotta hold the Cowboys for a minute 12 with three timeouts. Let's go, boys. Cam Turner, the generational running back drafted this year. That's a rook. He breaks a tackle from Leighton Van Der Esch and takes it into the end zone. You're a monster, bro. Cowboys take over on what is likely their final drive. This determines who goes to the Super Bowl. The Chiefs beat the Jaguars, I think is what I'm seeing down there. I don't know if that was the divisional or if that's the AFC championship right there. Really bad play right there from the Cowboys. Threw it inbounds, check down. Clock's ticking. They don't use a timeout. We'd love a sack. Another low throw broken up by TJ Edwards or is that Tremaine Edmonds? I think that's TJ Edwards. Actually, that might have been Jadarius McCutcheon. I don't know, but it's third and seven if we can get to the QB here. He goes play action. They've got a lot. There. Oh, intercepted, intercepted by CJ Gardner Johnson. No, or Greg Newsom. CJ Gardner Johnson. We poached him off the Lions for Eddie Jackson in a draft pick. And he makes the NFC Championship ceiling INT. Oh, that's primetime Dak Prescott for you, baby. Let's go. Now we're trotting out the offensive rookie of the year. Best running back in the league. Cam Turner to power this puppy home. Takes it for five. If anybody can do it, it's Cam Turner. Cam Turner's gonna cut it up. And Micah Parsons is having none of it. Cam Turner. Woo! Play action rollout. What? What the fuck? Coach, I hate you. My coach is so... That was literally an interception. Like, Van Der Esch is choking this game away. We're going to take a field goal here with Evan McPherson. So, dude, that was such a bad play goal because not only do we not get it, but it was incomplete. It's an incomplete pass, so they retain a timeout. You just run that ball. Even if you don't get it, you force them to call a timeout. Now they have one timeout and 34 seconds. I don't think they're going to get it. I don't think they'll get a touchdown out of this. But why risk this? 
They're forced to return it. It's going to take some clock off, and the return team is all over that. Four seconds burn. They only get to the 19. Great work. First and 10. Dak unloads to a wide open tight end. They use their only timeout. They have to get in the end zone. That timeout. Ooh, using the timeout there is kind of crazy, actually. If he throws anything or gets sacked, Chase Young. Chase Young just made the play of the game. They're in Hail Mary now. Chase Young made the play of the game. He's going to check down. What? Are you doing? That's ball game. Oh my God. Coach wants to lose so bad. What was that? But hey, it doesn't matter. A dub is a dub. Chase Young gets home to deck with no timeouts left. They're forced to run. You know what? I shouldn't be surprised. I've seen the Cowboys in real life run the shittiest final play of the game I've ever seen. Dude, Dak had insane stats. 389 yards, two touchdowns, two interceptions. It's Cam Turner, man. This is the difference maker. Cam Turner. This isn't even one of his best games, but still solid. Justin Fields, 9 for 48, 5.3, and a touchdown on the ground. We squeak past the Dallas Cowboys. Oh, that was so scary. What a huge touchdown to convert on. Cam Turner on the screen. He breaks the tackle off of Van Der Esch. That's what's even cooler about that. Cam Turner actually gets an upgrade here. That's going to take him to a 96 overall. Technically a 99 with morale. Gets Excel, ball carrier vision. Looks like somewhere along the way you got a speed upgrade because that is a 99 speed, 96 Excel. Oh, he's so good. Top 2% of halfbacks in the league in his first year. They just don't build them like that anymore, gentlemen. They just don't build them like Cam Turner. It's time for the Super Bowl. There's only one thing between us and a complete video, and that's the Super Bowl. Of course, we see the Chiefs here. 13 and 4 Bears taking on the 14 and 3 Chiefs. They're kind of hanging with us overall wise. They're 92, we're 95. Gonna take a look at the Chiefs roster. Usually in these Sims, the Chiefs don't change that much either. I'm pretty sure Rishi Rice is gonna be insane. He usually Sims so well. Chris Jones still there, 99. Bolton's a 99. Humphrey's a 99. Pacheco, 99. Rishi Rice, 98. Yeah. McDuffie's a 97. Trey Smith's a 95. And they got Alonzo Bond, free safety. He's a superstar. Nice draft pick. They got Easton Martin, tight end, also a superstar. They had to replace Travis Kelsey, and they did very well doing so. All right, Chiefs. Gentlemen, I don't think we could ask for much more in the Super Bowl. We're taking on a 92 overall Chiefs team. Chris Jones, Rishi Rice, Patrick Mahomes. We got Jalen Johnson, Cam Turner, Chad Artisty. Oh, the draft, man. The draft built this team, and the trades just made it even better. We find ourselves in the Super Bowl. Harder! Rock Stadium, the Bears taking on the Kansas City Chiefs. Guys, I'm pretty sure this is a real life Super Bowl preview. You can expect to see this IRL. Opening drive, Bears score, and again, 10-0, 10-3. Dude, no way. We're not gonna, we're not gonna blow them out in the bowl, right? 31 to 10, 41 to 10, 48 to 10. Oh my god, we're shitting on them. Oh my god, the Chiefs fans have left the building. The stadium is clearing. The dynasty is over. It's it's Bears Dynasty now. Oh my god. There's no way. Cam Turner! Masterclass. 11 rushes, 64 yards. He's averaging six yards a carry. Chicago's got 600 total yards. Does Justin Fields have 500 passing yards? Oh my God, he has 512 passing yards. We're shitting on the Chiefs. Hand off Cam Turner, second and goal. Does it even matter? The Chiefs are getting blown out so bad that they're not even calling timeouts in the Super Bowl. We're basically in victory formation here. Second and goal. Come on, let's let Cam Turner punch one in. Let Cam Turner punch one in. Why not, right? Cam Turner. Cam Turner. <laughs> Insult to injury. <laughs> Oh my God, did you bet the over in the Super Bowl, gentlemen? I think the Bears hit it by themselves. That's 55 points. For the sh I've never built such a busted team. Dude, I swear to God, this team would be nothing without Cam Turner. Like, drafting Cam Turner took us from what would have been an amazing team to a full-blown dynasty. Holy shit, 55 to 24. Taylor Swift is just devastated. She's devastated. She can't believe her pookie bear, Travis Kelsey, just got waxed. Travis Kelsey actually retired in this franchise, so he's not even out there, but I know that him and T Swift are watching. Watching as the Bears put up 55. Would that be a Super Bowl record? 55 in the Super Bowl? Maybe? I don't know. God damn. Justin Fields. 
I think he threw for 500. Oh my God. Tell me you've ever seen this. Tell me you've ever seen this. 20 for 27, 512 passing yards, six touchdowns. No, that is the most unbelievable stat line I've ever seen. And Justin Fields is not even one of my best players. Cam Turner still had an amazing game with a touchdown, but who got all of our yards? Cole Komet gets 70. Enrique Garcia, 177, three touchdowns. He low-key could get Super Bowl MVP. It's probably still going to be Fields, but three for 191 Cam Turner. Oh my God. That's why. Three for 191 Cam Turner. This guy turned everything. Not even that we needed it to be turned around, but Cam Turner ballooned this team. That's insane. That, that will go down as my best draft pick ever. I don't think I'll ever top that. Just with how impactful he was too. He just had three touchdowns and 300, no, 250 all-purpose yards in the Super Bowl. 2026 season recap. 55 bomb on the Chiefs. Justin Fields wins Super Bowl MVP. Chicago Bears win it all. Josh Allen gets NFL MVP. Cam Turner, of course, offensive rookie of the year. There is no question. I could see Cam Turner winning MVP. Like, he could win MVP of the league at some point here. I probably need to switch my playbook, make it a little more running back dominant, but still, what an absurd absurd season wow 13 and 4 take it all the way to the bowl and win it and before i go anywhere i want you to see the final lineup and then i'm gonna sim five years in the future and see if this dynasty holds up cam turner 99 justin fields amazing what a draft pick there dj moore developed amazingly enrique garcia developed even better darnell mooney still solid hey he got a ring he can't be mad that he got moved to wide receiver three McAllister, awesome offensive lines just looking so good very happy with braxton jones for not bitching about getting moved to seven Darnell Wright. Cole Komet, Superstar X Factor, 96 overall. Then defensively, we've got our very first round one pick one. Chad Hardesty, amazing player. Greg Newsome went up to Superstar X Factor. I didn't even know that until right now. Jalen Johnson, Superstar X Factor. CJ Gardner Johnson. Whoa, I have a lot of Johnsons. CJ Gardner Johnson with a huge interception that NFC Championship. TJ Edwards developed great. Edmonds, of course, too. Ladarius McCutcheon really didn't develop that much or do much, but you know what? He's got a ring too. Jaquan Brisker, Superstar. Chase Young, superstar Michael Pierce, just happy to be here. Same with Jaden Turner. They got a ring. What a squad. All right, boys. I'm going to sim five years into the future. Let's see what this team does. We're at 94 overall. I still have a lot of draft picks. I hardly traded that many away at all. We should be a dynasty. 2029, wait, Desmond Ritter wins Super Bowl MVP. Hey, he got his get back, bro. Desmond Ritter got his get back in 29. In 28, wow, the Saints win it and the Chiefs go back. So the Jaguars get it in 27. I'm kind of annoyed that we never went back. 26 was it did we win any like awards do we win offensive player cam turner cam turner wins offensive player of the year though in 2029 so that's good news what's the roster look like we're still at 91 overall i mean you can't really nuke a franchise that fast whoa whoa what the fuck we drafted two x-factor tight ends the computer did what Look at the depth of tight end. We have three fucking X-Factor tight ends. I've never seen that. Justin Fields is an X-Factor now. Superstar X-Factor. Reed McAllister is a 99. And we have five superstar X-Factors on defense. What is going on? I really built the greatest dynasty ever. Except we won no Super Bowls. This is the weirdest, this craziest rebuild ever. But hey, if you're a Bears fan, I hope you loved it. All right, boys. That's it for today. I love you guys. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.